so let's get started so this is going to be a series of lectures on linear algebra right so for organizational purposes i am dividing the content into many sub units so we will have you know lots of these uh, uh, small pieces but all of them i'm going to just call them lectures so this is lecture 1 lecture 2 so on but there will be each of them will be tiny lectures so let's start with a i guess it's more in the the nature of recall right most of us should be familiar with with vectors so let's get started so this lecture is about uh, vectors that we are familiar from from high school okay so we tend to think of vectors as objects that have a magnitude and a direction associated with them right so however one has to be a little more careful not everything which has both a magnitude and direction is going to be a vector so for a vector to be a vector it has to satisfy certain properties the key one key property is how two vectors add right so if you add two vectors you must get another vector and which has a very precise uh, form right so we are also familiar with this so let's just recall how we thought of addition of vectors right so there is one way of thinking of this is the geometric approach you can think of you know a vector a and a vector b and if you want to add these two you place the tail of vector b at the head of vector a and then you draw a vector from the tail of uh, uh, vector a to the head of vector b right so that's going to be a plus b right so there's an algebraic approach which one can come up with which is to add the components separately right so suppose so i'm here for the purpose of illustration i'm thinking of these as two dimensional vectors so in general you can have you know whatever dimension you want so then you have all these components associated with these vectors you add these component the vectors component wise so the x component of the vector a plus b is simply a x plus b x and the y component of a plus b is a y plus b y right so this is another way of thinking about addition of vectors right so a key aspect of this operation which we have called addition is that it's commutative and it's also associative right so this is an essential um, you know aspect of what this operation called addition means right so the reason why we are going into these apparently very simple operations is because we want to look at vectors in a much more abstract way which we will start doing from the next lecture onwards but the point is that we will look at a familiar object you know the vectors and try to pull out the key properties and then we'll just work with you know more abstract quantities which have these properties right so we're looking at uh, vectors and we observe that addition is commutative and also it is associative what does commutativity mean it means simply means that it doesn't matter whether you add a to b or b to a so the result is the same right we could have in the geometric approach we could have you know started with the vector b and you know place the uh, the uh, tail of vector a at the head of vector b and then add it, it it would still give us the same answer right so a plus b is the same as b plus a and and it's it's evidently clear also with the algebraic approach and associativity means if you are adding three vectors a plus b plus c now it doesn't matter where you put the brackets right so you could put the brackets as a plus you know b plus c being added first and then you add a to it or you could think of it as the addition of a and b first you know you put a brackets uh, you know corresponding to a and b a plus b brackets plus c so it doesn't matter in which order you do this operation uh, you're going to get the same answer right so that's what associativity means right so we can you know look at uh, the way we have de defined addition and immediately verify that these two properties hold right so we were going to make this more general and then but we will try and we'll preserve these properties that's why it's important to observe these properties so the other you know aspect of a vector is 
multiplication with a scalar. If you take a vector and multiply by a scalar, right? So for the moment, let's think of just real numbers. If you take a real number and multiply it with some vector, its direction is going to remain unchanged in the in this uh, uh, for these familiar two-dimensional or three-dimensional vectors, but its magnitude is going to get magnified or or diminished by this factor c right it's all very familiar we have we have thought about this in high school and the multiplication with minus 1 is going to just change the direction but keep its magnitude unchanged right so we are going to come back to this later on so in fact we will say that multiplication by an arbitrary complex number is possible a scalar uh, could be uh, uh, taken from a complex field. We are going to generalize this later on, right? And vector, the notion of a vector itself is going to be generalized, but subject to these properties. That's why it's important to identify these properties. Okay, so but before we go on to thinking about abstract vectors, let's very quickly uh, point out an example where, you know, you, the use of vectors already gives you a lot of power. Right, so from high school, we geometry, you know, there are all these theorems which we proved, and many of these had very complicated proofs. So let's just look at one example where simply the use of vectors, as we have defined it so far, itself can give you very elegant and and um, instructive proofs. So one statement that we are familiar from high school is that if you take a triangle and then draw the medians of the triangle, they're all going to intersect at the same point, first of all, and they're going to intersect at a point which is, which is two thirds of any of these medians, right? So, so let me show you a diagram. So I have this triangle ABC and we are asked to prove that if you drop these medians AP and BQ, right, they're going to intersect at some point M, for sure they're going to intersect. And so the uh, assertion is, that this AM, the length AM is two thirds of the length AP and likewise the length BM is two thirds of the length BQ. And if you had drawn the third one, which I'm not drawing here, that two would be the same, right? So CM is going to be two thirds of the median from C uh, to AB, to the side AB. Okay, let's prove this using vectors and we will appreciate the power of, you know, this simple abstraction itself. So consider this triangle, okay, so I have joined AP and I have joined uh, BQ. So let, let them intersect at M, right? So all of this is uh, by uh, construction, we have just drawn these things and we have named them. So now let's look at this vector BQ, right? So I want to look at two thirds of the vector BQ. So it has its, it starts at B and goes all the way up to Q. So let me see what is two thirds of BQ. But what is BQ? BQ is from this parallelogram law of addition, BQ is nothing but BC plus CQ, right? It's important to uh, get the direction, right? So BC plus CQ is equal to BQ. So I have two thirds of BQ is equal to two thirds of BC plus CQ, but which is the same as two thirds of BC plus half of CA, right? Because Q is the midpoint between uh, of AC, right? So two thirds of BC plus half CA, which in turn is nothing but two thirds BC plus, I'm just multiplying this out. So I have two thirds BC plus one third CA. So let's keep this as it is. Now let's compute the same two thirds BQ in a, in a different way, right? So we have BA plus two thirds AP, right? So let's, uh, let's compute BM. So I'm claiming that if I go from B to A and then I come down two thirds of this direction along AP of, of this length AP, then I'm going to get to the same point, right? I have to show this. So I'm, you know, in principle, it could have been some other point, but we will show that in fact, it's going to be the same as the other vector BQ. So if I do BA plus two thirds of AP, that's the same as saying it's BA plus two thirds of AP is nothing but AB plus half BC, right? So think of it as I have this, this vector AP. AP is, 
I could come down from A to B and then from B to P. But B to P is nothing but half BC. So I write it as AB plus half BC. So I have AP is AB plus half BC. So BA plus two thirds of AB plus half BC, right? And so then I just expand this out. I have one third one third BC plus one third BA, right? So we have to realize that the vector BA is the same as minus vector AB, right? So taking this into account, I get one third BC plus one third BA. But what is BA? BA is BC plus CA, right? So I can write this as one third BC plus one third of BC plus CA, which is if I collect all these terms together, I get two thirds BC plus one third CA. So, so what I have managed to show is whether I directly go along this vector BQ, if I uh, with, a, with a magnitude which is just two thirds of this length BQ, I'm going to get the same vector as BA plus two thirds of AP, right? I could equally well have done it for the third side and I'll end up at the same point, right? So first of all, it shows that all these three lines by symmetry, right? So all, so all these three lines intersect and they intersect at a point which is two thirds of of this each of these medians, right? So it's a clever, elegant proof. And so in fact, you can use vectors in a similar manner to prove many of the many of your high school theorems, right? So I'll probably send out a homework around this. But this was just to quickly illustrate the power of vectors with such a minimal level of abstraction, right? So we are going to make them more abstract and, and uh, come up with the notion of what is called a vector space in the next lecture. Thank you.